How you doing, YouTube? Yeah, we're back at it. Back in the saddle. Quick. Quick. Quick back in here. You know, we're starting about five minutes early. I don't care. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to drink this sweet high life. And then we'll cut into a sucker. This comes courtesy of Chuck from Illinois. Uh, uh, Chuck, Charles. He's Charles on the internet. He's Chuck when he mails stuff. I don't know. We'll call them both. Uh, he comments a lot on videos, like a lot. And I appreciate the shit out of that. And he sends beer mails every now and then. And they're crazy. First time, first beer mail he sent me was like a lot of like what you'd expect, like Illinois, like kind of, I guess you'd say hyper hype stuff, like uh, energy city. And this is a couple of years ago, energy city and microphone and Brickstone, which I never heard of, which is fantastic. And, and, and some mystery beers, I believe. And it was just, a fantastic mail. I think there's a Bourbon County in there too. And then the second beer mail, he said, I think there's been three total. This might be four. I think there was four. This is four. I could be wrong. My mind sucks. Second one is actually like all mystery beers and then a bunch of like revolution, <laughs> like barrel age jams, which is like bonkers stuff. I'm curious. I'm curious. Cause it's been a minute. I think it's been about a year since he sent this something off. Um, yeah. Uh, what's going on? Adam from Mercy Beer is showing it's beer festival season in the UK. Everybody, um, well, not everybody, but a good portion of the UK people that you should know and you should love, you should, um, are attending uh, some festival tomorrow. Uh, we're going to try to do a quick like hangout to show how shitty all of us are at some portion of the show. So we'll see what's up over here in the United States. It, we're, we're headed for a shutdown again. So like this is beer tube of blues and then dunzo probably uh especially since i got a kid and all that kind of stuff but you, you know what the prerequisite for coming to this festival was one you had to be a good person <laughs> and two you had to be vaccinated so um yeah we'll probably do this and i'm probably gonna pump the brakes on going out and out and again and just start doing sh shop from home and stuff like that because I, my mother-in-law is not vaccinated you know my kid's not and you know covid hasn't really you don't know with delta but hasn't been you know hard on kids but i don't know but i'd rather play it close to the vest so it's kind of one last to rot well two last rods tomorrow and then saturday so we'll see what's what so um this is peter needs more love than most okay fair enough um yeah he's talking about the clueless drinker for those of you that don't know um so yeah let me let me uh let me kind of get this one down hmm I fucking love High Life. It's the best. Mm. That fucking beer. I'll drink it all day. You want know to drink all day too? Polar Pills. Just came back to the United States. I reviewed it. Actually, Polar sent me some. But this I bought myself because I love it that much. I wanted some drinking beers for tomorrow for the old, well, tomorrow and Saturday for the old Beer Tube Palooza. Let's give this a pour. Throw this over here, and we're going to dive into some unboxings. Um, uh, Mark, what's going on, Mark? How you doing? What's going on, brother? I am doing quite well. It is brutal hot over here. Um, oh, I know you guys deal in Celsius. So I don't know how that works, but today it was 97 degrees Fahrenheit with a heat index at real feel. What it feels like was 108 degrees where I was today. <laughs> Tomorrow's going to be much the same the first beer tube palooza festival we did was uh much actually the same exact temperature pretty much it was brutal i think i don't want to jinx everything but i think we got spared so tomorrow's gonna be kind of hot but guys are gonna come later and blah blah, blah. but saturday it's looking like low 80s shady a bit of a breeze so hopefully we're good to go uh i'm at liverpool crap beer festival tomorrow the rest are in london that's right uh they're talking about vaccination in the uk for oh, uh, as low as 14 years old you know my kids it's gonna be five months next week so he's not getting vaccinated anytime soon um he gets enough as his immune goal is definitely better than the pills so say you mm. it's a little maltier than what i remember this is old. This is old as fuck. This is um, almost a year old. I didn't look at the date. That's on me. It's also on the place itself. So, like I said, my boy Chuck sent this off. Let's open this up and see what's what. Hopefully, I'm assuming there's going to be some bigger bottles in here because of the size of the box. And, um, you know, bigger bottles mean I want to drink them with friends. 
which means I will probably drink some of these or beer too. Who is it? Chuck has been known to throw fastballs. Like, I'm not talking like, you know, you make the team fastballs. I'm talking like, you know, Aroldis Chapman closer fastballs. So we'll see what he sent off this time. Oh, ooh, man. Shit flying everywhere. There we go. And we're open. Almost knocked my beer over. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Oh, ho, ho. let me move my phone before I crush it. Uh, oh. oh, look at that. That thing's sexy. Oh, notes. Notes. YouTuber Palooza. A Matt, hope all is well. Inside two mystery beers, two cans each, both marked. Um, two bottles uh, for keeping uh, together. Table beer, 3%. Saison, 6%. Barrel age bean birthday on adjunct bean. Two random rev cans. Chuck, I love the psychopathic marker kind of like he, he wrote this like this, not like this. He wasn't holding it like this. It was like, get the marker and just write it like you're just like, like, like the Zodiac killer. And I kind of really love that, dude. Thank you very much. So notes, we're going to, it still smells like highlighter too. So I'm kind of excited. <laughs> so we'll see what's what. So there's stuff to share. There's stuff to keep. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see what's what. So we'll jump into these. Marcel. Bath tissue. Um, you use what you got. Oh, so I'll tell you right now. My boy Chuck does Tavor because that's a Tavor box. We got a sweet Viva paper towel mystery beer. Oh man, it's so soft. So soft and so nice. Let's cheat and look at the date, but there's none. So mystery number one. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. When I get extra tissue, I could use that for my bum bum. Uh, mystery number one. So we got paired up. So from what I'm reading here, it says Matt, I hope all's well. Inside two mystery beers, two cans of each, bold mark. So I think we're gonna do these are beer tube paloozas. That's what they are. So we're, uh, we're gonna do these two mystery beers of beer tube palooza. I have no idea what they are. Nobody else is gonna know what they are. That is pretty fantastic. So there should be two more. So there's two mystery beers a piece, but there's two cans of each. He's playing with my brain because he's putting them in random places. Oh, he put them on the outside because they're cans. It's smart. So we got two mystery beers, four cans, all the same beer, unless he's really fucking with us, which would be even fucking better. Um, so we'll see what's what. Okay, throw that there. Um, I'll go to comments real quick before we dive into non-mystery beer stuff. Um, 2 a.m. in the Netherlands, uh, city of Harlem. We have a Harlem here in New York. Um, and it says they got a really poopy smoke stout from around the corner. It's thin and it has paper and got as much smoke as a vacuum of space. Actually, don't they say like, what does space smell like? Space spell, uh, space smells like something, right? When you live in Dutch beer YouTuber on YouTube again, when are you going to li li live with a Dutch beer YouTuber? I don't know. Um, this sent me some beers and we're supposed to do some beer stuff together. I don't think we're going to do it live, but we're going to record stuff, but I'll be back on with those guys. Definitely without a doubt. Miss Glow. Oh shoot. I caught you live. I've been watching a shit ton of beer vids since I turned 21. Cheers. Cheers. To you, Miss Glow. Yeah. Good on you for watching. Uh, Joe from the beer patrol. Fuck the mail. I just want to save that note. That's what I'm talking about. Psychopath shit is the way it should go. Aha. Uh -huh, nice letter. Adam saying, uh, started cutting out letters from newspapers for your mystery beer box. I still, I got to send you a beer. I'm poor right now. I got to wait a month or so until I can send beer back out. I got like three or four different international ones I have to send out. How much beer do you have in stock? I typically only keep in stock. I mean, I have like some age, age stuff. I don't have a seller. Like, it's not how I roll. I drink my beers, but I have some stuff like my mica beers and stuff like that. But um, right now, my beer fridge is completely full. Um, and I just got a new refrigerator in my house. Um, so I put our old refrigerator out in our barn and I've been filling that up with some beers just cause prepping for beer tube with blues. So I got some decent stuff. I don't, I typically don't have that much. I drink my beers. Mm. Okay. I'm with the show. So we got mystery beer one. There we go. We have mystery beer two. I'm digging this. Definitely doing mystery beers. I'm excited for the FLX guys, Dan and Mike, to do mystery beers. We're like, we never did one before. I'm like, <laughs> good luck. Um, so that means we have four bottles. 
first up. Oh, no. Can. Uh, VSOJ, Barley Wine. Ooh, this is the, is this the, oh, this is the new one, buddy. Oh, this is the new one that just literally came out. Two-year-old barley wine. Fuck y'all. Yeah, buddy. Because I looked at the bottom, I was like, oh, how old is this? I was like, holy shit. Like June 29th, 2021. It says, celebration of malt, oak, and patience. Very special old straight jacket is a cuvee of English barley wines age. Between two and four years in our favorite bourbon barrels, lusciously sweet and colossally complex, a VSOJ is equal parts refinement and excess. Enjoy now our store cold. Yeah, so it's this very special old street jacket, two years extended barrel aging. God damn. Yeah. God damn. Oh, yeah, Dan and Mike are in for a treat. Street beer wise, such a different beast i think i shit my pants and blacked out my first time well you know that's kind of when i met you for the first time i did the same thing so yeah nice box gonna go to sleep good day we'll see you mark oh we're talking about double layers here son so then we have oh two of these two of the same one you're throwing it down like that so these are two of the same one I don't think it's a variant. They're both the same ABV. So maybe we'll do these. What's the note say? Two bottles of keeping, barely being set up, two random rev cans. Two random. <laughs> he said random with air quotes, you jerk. Two random rev cans. Um, and this one, so just for those keeping score at home, um, this one over here, was can the same day at 11 10 a.m. and this is 11 49 a.m. So if I drink, if we do these together, I'm doing the older one because the older one's always better. 40, 50, 30 minutes. I don't care. 30 minutes is 30 minutes. I'm drinking an older one, motherfuckers. Chuck throws the heat, as I said, um, you know, leading into this. So I want to I make sure I'm not missing anything before I go and start grabbing these bottles. So he said, there's uh, what do you say? Two bottles keeping of keeping together, uh, and a bean birthday. So there's a, a microphone in here. What do we got? What do we got? Keeping together. What is this table beer? Is this side project? What is this? Art of holding space. The art of holding space. Table beer. Keeping it. Oh, keeping together. I've never heard of these guys before. So you're talking about a. I mean, this is probably gonna have to get drank. When he said keeping together in the note, I assumed it was keeping together. Like you want to keep these beers together. I didn't know that was actually the name of it. So you're talking about a seven percent um, or, or table beer keeping together. Uh, the art of holding space is a table beer. There's no ABV on this. But it's it's table there, so it's gotta be three percent. He actually he called out my note is flowing away with the fan. Um he said what three percent, two pound three percent table beer. And then we have this one, which should be the Saison. Saison with peaches, vanilla, and lemongrass. Ooh. Uh, let's rip into it and like the meanders all I am. So I've never heard of these guys keep together. I have no idea. I've never heard of them before. So Chuck is thrown down that like, hey, you never heard of these guys. Shit. I'm sure it's something popular and I'm just out of touch. Um, Saison with peaches and vanilla and lemongrass. No ABV. I'm cool with it. Saison. He says on there it's 6%. So we got a 3% table beer. We got a 6% Saison. And then last but not least, let's stir that over there for a little symmetry. I don't know, green green bottles, man. Come on. No, oh, Adam, you're a liar, a, li a big fat liar. No, three percent table beer is exactly what I want in a seven fifty. That's what I want. Like all these people make like seven fifties are like quads and stouts and all that shit. No, I want the larger the format, the lower ABV. That's what I want, like Magnums and Gerbers or whatever the Gerbas or whatever the fuck they call them. I want those to be 3% table beer because I want to drink. I want to drink this to my head. Like, I don't want to share this with anybody. I want to drink that all in my head. Bigger format, 
bigger. These tiny little itty bitty goddamn cans, where do they put them? I don't know. Push them back or something. Those little eight ounce cans, that's what I want stouts in. Your ass backwards. Euro, Euro trash. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay. And here, oh. you know, I'm not going to sit here and say like microphone is like the best brewery in the history of mankind. I've had really good beer from them. I've had hit or misses. There's something about that. Can you hear it? Here. Here, I'll turn my fan off so you can hear it. My sweaty ass needs a fan in order to survive. See how quiet it is right now. So quiet. That that matte black awesomeness. Come on, fam. I'll die if you don't start. There we go. Um, I love these kind of matte black kind of bottles. Um, it is some of my favorite stuff. And then when you combine it with this linen label, I mean, this is like really, really top notch stuff. So it's a barrel aged Imperial smells like birthday suit spirit, Imperial style age in uh, heaven Hill bourbon barrels. I mean, just, just that simplicity of the label, the quality of the label that, that matte blackness and that just pretty wax. I mean, I, I you know, I'm not gonna sit here and say pomp doesn't work on me. Obviously, it does. This beer is mad pretty. Uh, I'm excited, dude. Chuck, you're fucking, you're killing me. You're killing me, Smalls, in the best killing me Smalls way possible. That's fucking. Uh, listen, <laughs> I just fucked up my chair. Um, listen. I say this and I say this with absolute 100% truth. If someone sent me a beer mail and they sent me Yingling and Shatterbuck, I'd be appreciative and happy of that. You know what I mean? For someone to go out of their way to send me a beer mail in and of itself is just fantastic. It's humbling and it's kind of awkward to be perfectly honest with you. I mean, I've received a lot of beer mails and I've never been like, meh. You know, I mean, some of the stuff that comes from breweries is like, whatever, you know, you get a mailing list, they send shit out. But when some, you know, a regular viewer, you know, kind of goes out of their way, picks up stuff and then just sends stuff. That's amazing. You know what I mean? Regardless of the beer and style, but there is something, you know, when mystery beers are involved, it always kind of tickles me a bit more, you know, just because it's like, it's, it's just a fun thing. I love doing them and everybody loves watching them and, you know, if you're sending mystery beers, obviously you're watching and there's something about that. Uh, not to make other people that send beer mills feel weird. Chuck sent me mystery beers. He sent me epic barley wine. He sent me like top the top of the rung microphone so I could see what's what. And a new school table here in season. It's like, it's like I think he watches my channel kind of thing. And it's just so fucking cool. It's so fucking cool. Thank you very much, brother. This is absolutely epic. Absolutely fantastic. The weird part is I think these all might get drank tomorrow. I mean, they probably won't because when, you know, one of the, one of the, not hard things, but one of the weird things about beer tube Palooza or any kind of these larger shares is that you go in there with a, oh, I'll bring all these great things and everybody's going to love them and everybody does the same thing and you just don't have the time nor the wherewithal nor the liver space and stomach space and head space to drink all the beer that ends up coming there. Ah, there he is, the man of the hour, coming in at the at the end. Um, And, uh, you know, it's one of those things where it's like you, for all intents and purposes, you kind of expect to go through the beers that you want to go through. There's no way we're going to drink all these tomorrow. Maybe, maybe not. Definitely going to get into mystery beers, and that has to be a thing. And we'll see what's what. I mean, I, I, just thank you very much, brother, for sending these off. I'm not, I don't even know which one I'm excited for the most. I think it's kind of a push. I know it's kind of cheating because the mystery beers, I mean, they're doubled up, so they're meant for a group of us to do, which honestly is so fucking cool. Um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just laugh at that. Um, this I'm I'm not gonna lie to you. This I'm super intrigued about because of my kind of back and forth between 
you know, in the microphone, like I really do dig them, but they've been a little bit kind of whatever. I'm curious about this one. And the new brewery stuff, man, this is like, I've never heard of these guys. I mean, uh, you know, Chuck and Charles, I mean, like I said, he's Chuck when he mails shit to me. He's Charles when he writes stuff. That's the cool thing about keeping together is Avery Swanson is the brewer and she contracts out of hack half acre, but she comes from Jester King side project. I mean, I mean, what kind of pedigree is that? I don't honestly, I have not heard anything about it. And honestly, you're, you're talking about, she contracts out a half acre, but she comes from Jester King side project. I mean, that's kind of, you know, Corey with fucking perennial. It's kind of what he did, you know, same thing. So it kind of makes sense for her to do that. Sure. She's no, not doing it at side project, but she couldn't, they don't have the space I would imagine, but they, you know, half acres facilities are banging. So uh, I just, I don't know. I want to drink all these right now. Uh, I should do crack them all open, do a cuvee and see how they, no, uh, I'm lying. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely very very cool dude and um i'm very appreciative i know i say that i don't even know what to say like i said like a lot of times that mystery beers are or not mystery beers beer mails are awkward in general especially if you're just you know i don't know but yeah 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 thank you thank you that's all i can say is thank you Thank you very much, dude. These are definitely going to be drank uh, by some of us and by me and by everybody. Um, I actually wanted to get to a couple comments before I leave um, because I've been kind of just yammering on and talking about stuff. So we're going to rewind a little bit and talk about um, some comments. Don's beer reviews. Trying been saying hi, everyone. What's going on, Don? He says one, uh, one brewing, one condition. Um, Mercy Beer Don, it's late for your fellow. How's the home brewing going on? Oh, is it one brewing, one conditioning? Way past my bedtime and sitting and enjoying an Imperial Kirsch 11% vocation one vocation. Have you tried it? By the way, this is a great unboxing. It is absolutely, yeah. Crazy beer to be in a supermarket. Okay, I used to talk about something else. Charles Chairman Don's like, uh, just filled a card on the website. He's talking about the um, uh, ordering stuff online. And uh, Shitbird Gaming, chiming in saying cheers. What's going on, homie? Yeah, so much beer, so little time. Matt, the table beer should be the pre-beer tube of loser beer. I have a theory about that. I don't like to escalate from low to high the whole day. I like to go low, 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 like progress to high and then reset. Try to put in something in between there that's not like a super great beer, but like high in acidity. Like, a, like, you know, just like a Berliner kind of goes a thing, a little petite sour. Just kind of reset a palate and just recycle back and forth on that kind of stuff. So we'll see what's what. Um, Don saying, I enjoy you watching Mystery Beers. Was, what's your success rate, Massive Beers? I, it depends on what you classify as success. Um, I think I'm always right. So I'm, no, uh, I think I do pretty well. Um, I said this in the previous unboxing, there was a stretch there from, I think it was 2019 where like, I was on like a really silly run. You know what I mean? Like silly, silly, like Mike Tyson, when he first started out kind of silly, like I was just getting it. Like, I don't know why, I don't know what happened. I got old. I had a kid I'm lazy. I got lucky. I don't know. Um, but you know, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. The one thing I'll say about mystery beers is one, they're very, very fun. Um, they're very humbling, but they're also, I think it's, it's also fun to step back and, and think about the, like when you're done doing a mystery beer, especially if you botch it is to drink it and drink it and drink it after you're done, after the camera's over. Cause sometimes I think I'm right. I'm not saying I'm trying to say it in a pretentious way, but sometimes if I get like a 10% pastry IPA, blah, 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 and it drinks like something completely different. And then like. I'm drinking it. I'm like, you know what? I'm not fucking wrong. Like, I know I'm not. Now I know what I'm drinking. I'm still drinking it. It's not hubris. I know I'm not fucking wrong. I think this is beer is more what I'm talking about rather than what the can is describing. Because that's the whole thing. Just because a brewery says this is what the beer is doesn't necessarily mean that's what it is. You have to find a balance between the two. So in the grand scheme of things, it, it's, I don't think success rate. I mean, it's great when you nail shit there. It's a very fun feeling and it's fun to do. And it's very, very cool. But that's that's like the that's an ancillary kind of byproduct of it. It's more just the just the experience and testing yourself and having fun with it. Because one of the cooler parts of mystery beers is the person watching. You know that I didn't realize how cool that was until I got a little bit deeper into it. And that 
you know, there's something to be said of knowing the plot of the movie and watching it unfold and watching people react. So, you know, whether or not you get it right or wrong to actually, you know, for someone to send a mystery beer, like there's like, sometimes they're wrapped very similar. So a person might not know their send what beer is theirs, but there's no way Chuck's gonna not going to know what beers are his. So to, for everybody to go into it and start talking about it and for him to know exactly what it is and, 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 and go from that angle is, is kind of fun. So they're just fun. It was fun. Um, Miglo says, what kind of yingling uh, did you say you wanted? No, it was more of a thing. If someone were to send me yingling, I would be appreciative of them sending me beer. I, I mean, besides, I'm, I'm not a big fan of yingling, both from a beer aspect and a brewery aspect, but it was more of just uh, a conversation than the actual beer. It says, cool bay, baby. <laughs> Charles Hello. Don, I would say Matt is probably the best beer tuber in mystery beers. Thank you very much, Adam. I'm very, thank you very much. They're only awkward if you make it awkward. Uh, you do uh, very well. Thank you. And a tough thing to do. It is tough, but it's fun, man. That's a, Here's the thing. And, uh, you know, the thing, the best thing about mystery beers um, is that, uh, no, I wouldn't say the best thing. The best way to approach mystery beers is don't give a fuck if you're wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? Always confident, often wrong is kind of that thing. You know, you just just say it. You know, a lot, sometimes I even find myself being hesitant rather than like jumping out and saying something and being like, no, just fucking say it. What if, oh, if you're wrong, what's going to happen? Ooh, you're wrong. You know, when you're a teenager and that's and, and you're living in that kind of world and that world means you ask a girl out and she rejects you someone says oh what's 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 so or a girl or guy or someone in between doesn't matter whatever your preference is it's like if you get shot down if you get rejected it'd be like so big deal you got rejected well that's a big deal when you're younger and you don't have that mental fortitude to kind of be able to take that information and process it properly and compartmentalize it and just toss the key. Um, when you're older, it's just like, well, I don't give a fuck if I'm wrong about a mystery beer. Like I could give two fucks and that's probably the best way to approach it because if you're wrong, who cares if you're wrong, it's better. People love it when I'm wrong, you know? So it's one of those things where it's like, it's like betting on your favorite sports team to win the Super Bowl, you know, or betting against your favorite sports team, I should say, to win the Super Bowl. You know what I mean? Like if they're making it in the playoffs and you go, okay, I'm going to bet all my money on my favorite sports team. And if they win or against my favorite sports team, I keep messing it up. If they win, I still win my favorite sports team, <laughs> you know, one, if they lose, I won money. I still win. You know, it's kind of like one of those things. So yeah. anyway, um, uh, uh, yeah, heard the wrong way. Yeah. I'm just yingling. I'm not a big fan. Ah, I just don't want to get into politics of it, literally. Um, truth, one once I stopped caring, if I was right or wrong, it was much easier. Too many times I get in my own head during a review. I still do the same thing, man. Um, you know, a lot of times I'll I'll go right out in left field. Like probably about six months ago, I did this, I, I did a beer and I was going down this path of like this Belgian high BV tequila barrel aged Belgian ale. I was like, what the fuck? And I said, you know what? I'm fucking wrong. I know I'm wrong. And I sat back and I just reset my brain. I'm like, I'm drinking a 5% jalapeno. Oil. And that's what it ended up being. So it's like, I, you can totally get into that kind of thing where you kind of get in your own head and start to talk yourself into something. But yeah, that's, what's fun about it. Man. Um, and Don saying, I live at home now and tried to do a blind tasting, but ended up drinking a bottle of olive oil and bottle of ketchup. Well, there you go. You know, I like olive oil. I don't like ketchup. As long as you said all of, it was olive oil and ketchup, I think you're doing a, a bang up job. So there you go. It's a half an hour. These need to get pictures taken, put on the Instagrams, and I need the, I need to put these in the fridge. I want to drink one so bad, but I I won't do it. I'm I'm, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I drove around today getting all kinds of shit set up for for the for the the Palooza, and it's like 110 percent real feel. So I am tired. So. I am going to leave. I am going to probably go sit on my couch. I'm going to go kiss my boy and hug him. And then I'm going to sit on the couch and I'm probably going to veg. Watch a little TV, maybe a little video games. And then wake up with a clear mind, clear hearts, clear eyes, can't lose. And um, and start the weekend. Yeah. I'm sure you're just going to start seeing stuff pop up starting tomorrow. So thank you very much, Chuck, for sending these off. I can't say thank you enough. So I will say thank you yet again. Um, thank you for everybody stopping by and chatting. I'm very appreciative. A lot of comments, a lot of people engaging, stuff like that. Uh, thank you for stopping by. I think this is your first time, Don, maybe first or second time stopping by. Thank you for engaging. Um, and thank you for staying up so late to do so. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this little unboxing. Hopefully you enjoy me drinking these random beers. Hopefully you're enjoying some good beer this weekend. Hope to see you next time. <laughs>